Hi folks, this is Calc 1, Checkpoint Quiz 3. In number 1, we're asked to use the Epsilon Delta definition of limit to prove the following limit. So let's remember what the Epsilon Delta definition is. The limit as x goes to c of f of x equals l means given epsilon greater than 0 there is a delta greater than 0 so that if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon So let's fill in the particulars for this problem. x is getting close to negative 1, so my c is negative 1. This is the function I'm looking at, and that's the target limit l. So here's what I need to do. Given epsilon greater than 0, I need to find a delta bigger than 0, so that if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus negative 1, that would be x plus 1 is less than delta, then the absolute value f of x minus l, so 4 minus x over 5 minus 1, is less than epsilon. So what I'm going to do is work with this inequality and do a bunch of equivalent steps and see if I can get some sort of bound on that quantity. So let's start with that. Let's start with 4 minus x divided by 5 minus 1 less than epsilon. I can get a common denominator and then subtract And I can factor out a negative one-fifth. So a negative one from the numerator leaves me with my x plus one. And now properties of the absolute value tell me I get that. And what's the absolute value of negative one-fifth? One-fifth. So I can if I look at this, I've got the x plus 1 sitting there, less than 5 epsilon. Now all of these steps are reversible, so that means that if I want this to happen, all I need is for this to happen. So that's how we do the formal proof. Given epsilon greater than 0, choose delta to be 5 times epsilon. Then if 0 is less than the absolute value of x plus 1 is less than delta, then I'm just going to recopy most of my work. The 4 minus x over 5 minus 1 is equal to the 4 minus x over 5 minus 5 over 5 which is minus x minus 1 over 5, which is negative 1 fifth times x plus 1 in absolute value, which is the absolute value of negative 1 fifth, times the absolute value of x plus 1, which is 1 fifth times the absolute value of x plus 1. So I'm just reworking my arithmetic. And then here's the critical, uh, here's the critical point. I'm assuming that this, the absolute value of x plus 1 in particular is less than delta. So this is less than 1 fifth delta. So that's where I'm using this hypothesis right here. Now what did I choose delta to be? I chose delta to be 5 epsilon. So this is 1 fifth times 5 epsilon, 
which is epsilon. So now I look at what I started with, the absolute value of my f of x minus l, and it's less than epsilon. So hence, this is less than epsilon. So by definition, this limit as x goes to negative 1, 4 minus x over 5 equals 1. Now as we talked about in class, the delta that you typically find here is sort of the biggest delta. If epsilon is 1, then our delta would be 5 times 1, which is 5. Well, I could use delta equals 4, 3, 2, 1, a half, 0, 0, 1. All those deltas would work. Okay, number 2, we're asked to find the following trigonometric limit. x is going to 0. We have 1 minus cosine x over sine of 2x. So if we try our, our usual approach, we substitute x equals 0, and in the numerator I get a 0, but I also get a 0 in the denominator. So I have an indeterminate form. When you get a 0 over 0, there's a good chance you can do some sort of manipulation to simplify what's going on. And in that case, you may actually get the limit to work out. So when looking with trigonometric limits, there are a couple too we want to keep in mind that we, we proved in class. The first one is if you take the limit as u goes to 0 of the sine of u over u, that limit works out to be 1. Also, the limit as u goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine of u over u works out to be 0. So these are the two limits we're going to want to play with here. Let's take the limit as x goes to 0. I've got 1 minus cosine of x over sine of 2x. And so this is the limit as x goes to 0. And if I had a 1 minus cosine x over x, I'd be all set up to use that formula. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. But I can't just willy-nilly multiply this by 1 over x without compensating for it by multiplying by x. And I'll group that x then with the sine of 2x. Okay, so what, what have I done here? I've multiplied numerator and denominator both by x. I'm allowed to do that algebraically because the x I care about is getting close to zero, not necessarily at zero itself. This first factor, I know where it's going. I know it's going to zero. The question is, what's going on with this factor? If I know this factor is going to a, a real number, then I can conclude that my limit is zero by using the limit laws. So let's take a closer look at that limit. Limit as x goes to 0 of x divided by sine of 2x. Well, it certainly looks like this, except the inside of the trig function is 2x and what's outside is x. So I can fix this up again. I can get a 2x in the numerator, but I'm effectively multiplying the numerator of this fraction by 2. So to keep the balance, I'm going to multiply the denominator by 2. In other words, I'm going to multiply by 2 half. So once again, I'm multiplying top and bottom by the same quantity to get an equivalent fraction. Now at this point, it's, it's really up to you, pun intended, if you want to go through the substitution. If we let u equal 2x, then x going to 0 happens exactly when u goes to 0. And so this limit would be the same as the limit as u goes to 0 of 1 half u over sine of u. And what happens to u over sine of u? Well, sine of u over u goes to 1. So using properties of limits, u over sine of u is, is going to go to 1 over 1, which is 1. And I've got the half tagging along for the ride, so that's going to go to then 1 half times 1, which is a half. So we've just shown that this limit goes to a half. Since both of these limits exist, I can use the product rule for limits and conclude this is 0 times a half, which is 0.